you. I thank you. I give you all glory and honor in the magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I just hear you saying onward and upward, onward and upward. Father God, we're pressing into places, Father God, we've never been before in preparation of doing some things that we've never, ever done before. I thank you, Father God, that in Jesus' mighty name that you are preparing us, that we're receiving and believing and moving forward according to your will and your way. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And every heart that agrees said amen, 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 and amen. Turn with me to Mark, the 16th chapter, the 15th through the 18th verse. And the word of the Lord declared and he said to them go ye into all the go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believes and is baptized shall be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned and these signs shall follow those who believe in my name they shall cast out demons they shall speak with new tongues they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly it will by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover amen I want to preach to you about deliverance this evening. Deliverance. Amen. Deliverance. The pulling down of strongholds and setting captives free. The works of Jesus belong in the lives of every believer. For he has given us permission to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to pray for them and they shall recover. Everyone underneath the sound of my voice has that ability. In this present season of open doors, we are anticipating the doors and the opportunities that the Lord is preparing for us that will bring us into his abundant blessings, his purposes, and his will. Amen. We know God has a will for our lives. He created us. We belong to him. And he has purpose for each and every one of us. I said earlier today that we have also entered into a warfare. Warfare is a necessary part of our Christian walk. You can't get away from it. You can't get around it. And God forbid you ignore it. Amen. As it was with Jesus, so it is with us. He had warfare. He had issues he had to deal with. We are part of, part of the army of the Lord. We signed up when you received salvation. You were inducted into the army of the Lord. And it's an ever-growing army. Amen. As we serve the king, we are sworn to fight whoever fights our king. I said we are sworn to fight whoever fights our king. And we will be victorious over them. Amen. Whoever stands against our king, Satan is the enemy of our king. And his kingdom's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy the kingdom of God and all of those who are in it. Amen. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Amen. There's an old cliche that used to say, I read the end of the book. Amen. We are going to win. But we've got some battles we're going to have to overcome, some victories we're going to have to overcome in order to be victorious. But we've got to get in the position and place that we understand, and I've come to a conclusion, that all believers have the right, but all believers don't fight. Sad, but true. And maybe that's why the Lord said that by many or few. Amen. Because everybody does not embrace spiritual warfare. This is a battle that must be fought by all believers. But everybody's not on the battlefield. Amen. Some people are trying to find a place where there is no war. Where is there no war? Because if you find a place where there is no war and you show up, there's going to be one. Amen. Because you're going to start it when you get there. Amen. Hallelujah. 
you can't ignore or decide not to engage in spiritual warfare. It's akin to deserting and helping the enemy to try to win the war. By doing nothing, you can't even just say, I'm not, I'm just, I, I'm not going to bother the devil. I'm not going to do a thing. In Judges, the fifth chapter, the third verse, by doing nothing, you come underneath the curse of Maraz. Amen. And the curse of Maraz was released against those who refused to engage the enemies of the Lord. 23rd verse says, curse Maraz, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its inhabitants bitterly because they did not come to the help of the Lord to help of the Lord against the mighty. You, you cannot decide not to enter into the warfare. I've heard people say foolish things. Well, the devil ain't bothering me. You didn't recognize it. Amen. He's been messing with you so long, you think it's normal. Amen. We are approaching a season that we need to be engaged in because there are people that need to be set free. Amen. Never make the Lord an enemy. Tell your neighbor, never make the Lord an enemy. Because you are not going to win. Amen. You are not going to win and you may not see the fallout until judgment day when grace has been lifted. Then you will find out the judgment of God. We've been made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We have been given authority and power to engage and defeat the enemy in this year of open doors. It's also a season where the enemy of the people of God is going to try to open doors to anger, to discourage, to frustrate the purposes of God in your life. Satan doesn't want you to be prosperous, to live abundantly, or to prosper in spirit, soul, health, or body. His whole mission is to cause you to fall out of agreement with God. How many people know people who are out of agreement with God? Mad at God because of their circumstances. Mad at God because of what they're going through. And God is saying, I've made you more than a conqueror. I've given you all power and authority. I've given you everything I gave my son. Every church that is open should be delivering somebody, should be praying for people. Amen. We need people that need to want to get rid of what they're carrying. Amen. One of the purposes of the enemy is to cause you to open doors that are meant to be shut in your life, but you got a foot in them. You got a foot in the door and it can't close. Because you are keeping it open. God wants you to close some doors. Amen. How many know you, you have certain things in your life that need to be closed up, shut up, so you can move on? But we've not quite got to that place yet. You know, it, it's like not listening to the devil. Got quiet when I said that, didn't it? How many times do we listen to what the devil has to say? instead of immediately cutting him off and beginning to seek what God has to say. How many times do we listen to the devil when we should be trying to connect to God? He don't have anything new because he's got to go to the other side of Lord only knows what to get the information to get to speak to you because most of the time he's trying to cause something that you've already got forgiveness from to begin to become back a reality in your life. But we're talking to him and he's saying, but. But if we stop him and talk directly to God, how much further will we be? We would let go of some things that have been hindering and holding us. Tell your neighbor, I need deliverance from listening to the devil. And that's the truth. That's the truth right there. Because if you're suffering from worry, depression, or anything else, you didn't get it from God. You get free 
by talking to God. But talking to the devil, he'll keep stirring that thing up and stirring it up and stirring it up. And the worse you feel, the better he likes it. Because he's got you operating. You're drinking from the wrong cistern. You're drinking from the place where he's controlling what's going on. Amen. He also desires to keep you from moving in the promises that the Lord has ordained for you to walk in. Amen. Because it's all about praise. You begin to walk in what God says to walk in, you'll give him the glory, you'll give him the praise, you'll sing hallelujah. The devil don't want to hear that. He does not, he wants to hear you sinning against God, frustrated, murmuring, complaining, instead of saying, my God, what a mighty God we serve. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you sounding the trumpet. That's what that song was all about, sounding the trumpet about what God has done. Thanking the Lord. Personally, I don't think we praise God enough. Amen. Praise should be an automatic. And when something good happens in your life, you just need to break out and praise God. Just give him all the glory. For God has made a way out for us for this season. We're going to get free. I I'm telling you, in my spirit, I feel such a move of the supernatural that's coming. I, I feel a push. I feel a push. It wants to push me face down. I feel a push. That we're going to see such an outbreak of miracles. As soon as we step through the door. As soon as we say, Lord, I trust you. I don't care what the situation looks like. I trust you. Because that's what... That's deliverance. Deliverance has a lot of different um, definitions. And what I'm doing tonight, I'm laying the groundwork for teens. So you that are here tonight, God must have known you were the ones that's going to be in here tonight because I'm laying the groundwork that we're going to begin to develop teens. This is part one of what we need to, to begin to instill in you in order to be part of a deliverance team. And I know everybody here is not going to be one. Amen. Because to be able to be part of a deliverance team, the first thing you got to do is get rid of your fear of demons. You can't set anybody free if you're afraid. Amen. And fear will come. I'm telling you. Fear will show up because fear is going to test your waters. Fear is going to see if you really want to play. Now, if you really don't want to play, you just have to go sit down and you pray from a distance. Amen. You pray from a position where you feel comfortable. Amen. I, I remember I was working with a couple of guys and we were praying deliverance for people and one guy's wife talked him into coming to service. She couldn't come with him because she had to work. And he came up front, and we started praying for people. And I turned and started ministering to somebody, and I looked up, and he was sitting back there, one bench behind Sister Ida. And I said, I'm good, I'm good. I went back there, and his knee was, I, I thought he was a jackhammer. He came to work the next day. He said, no, none of that stuff bothered me. He said, I, it was a breeze. It was a, I said, what was wrong with your leg? He said, well, nothing wrong with my leg. He had a hand on it, trying to hold it down. I said, mm-hmm. I told his wife, send him back next week. Come with him. I said, because if there had been a chair out in the hallway, he'd been on it. And my wife laughed. She said, I saw him when he moved. He was trying to get up the aisle. I said, something had you, buddy. You know, pe people don't realize at times that something is going on that does not belong to you. Amen. This is a season of deliverance, a season of restoration, a season of being restored 
There's some of the things that the devil has stolen away from us. I, I remember if the overnight Apostle James kept saying that over and over and over and over again. I had gave a word about increase, 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 and she said, it's restoration, restoration, restoration. It's time to take back some of those things that have been stolen from us that we didn't say anything about. We get stuff stolen from us all the time that we don't say anything about. We just, it just happened. No, it didn't. The devil has a purpose for it. This is a season where deliverance is coming for those that desire to be set free. And people who have, who have had enough of his foolishness. Enough of his foolishness in your lives. We want to shut the door on the works of darkness and the demons that have been tormenting them. Amen? We're going to start speaking some truth, some points here that we need to get a hold of for where we want to go and what we want the Lord to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to begin to offer people an opportunity to come in here and get prayed for. Amen? We're going to announce it. We're going to tell people, come over here. Are we going to stir up the religious spirits? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, man, are we going to stir them up. <laughs> They're going to say, oh, that's not necessary. Christians can't have a demon. No, we just clown automatically. It's just built into us. We just cut up. That old tail is getting ready to die. But let me tell you something about that. I, I have always wondered why that thing keeps resurfacing. And it keeps resurfacing because people are protecting that area. So I can't have a demon. I've just got an issue. Hello? <laughs> Big thing. Big thing right there. If you're de protecting that, you can't get rid of it. You can't be delivered from anything. That's a good point you need to understand. You cannot be delivered from anything that you will not separate yourself from. You're on one corner of your mouth, you can be saying, I need to be free. I just need to be free of this. But when it comes down to getting free and you're not willing to do it, you can't get free. You're not willing to give it up. Amen? People have spirits that have been assigned to you. We're going to begin to teach some things so that you'll have an understanding in order to prepare for this type of service. In our text, which is written to believers, deliverance is not for unbelievers. You talk about causing a problem. But for those who are saved and baptized, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. If you're born again, you've been baptized, you got power. Tell your neighbor, I got power. Now, whether I choose to use it or not is the issue. Amen? Because Jesus gave this commandment and a mandate given to the church, all of the church. These are instructions for a New Testament church that is representing the kingdom of God and the earth. I looked at, as I said, the truth has set you free. I looked at some ministries and what they thought of deliverance. And they said it was never a ministry that was really declared a ministry in the word of God. And I went, okay, well, they ain't casting no devils out there. But they're trying to tell people what deliverance is and what deliverance isn't. I said deliverance is when you rescue somebody. I said, that was pretty weak. That was real weak. And then they gave a definition on there never was really deliverance ministry. Jesus never did say that this was a ministry. But he sent 82 people out to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to pray. Did he not? That looked like ministry. That looked like missionary ministry to me. Into the cities where he was going to come. See, 
that something different was happening. People began to get free. Demons began to cry out. Look at Mark 1, 23 through 27. The New King James says, Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Now Jesus came to the synagogue to preach. Amen. But the demon, a religious unclean spirit, and it was a religious unclean spirit because it was in church, was in a man in a synagogue. First point. Spirits are in people. An unclean spirit was in a man for all purposes. He was a good man, but he had an unclean spirit. Saved people have spirits. Saved people have spirits. Spirits don't just dwell in unsaved people. Saved people unsaved people get saved, and the spirits that they have come with them. I, I, don't, I don't ever hear people arguing about that. Most of us got our spirits, unclean spirits, unsaved spirits, and strongholds before you ever entered in the church. You came to church to get free. Amen. Amen. Saved people have spirits that are from their past and holding on to you to impact your future. That's what they're in here for. Second point. What is a demon? An evil spirit, a source or an agent of, of evil, harm or distress or ruin. A disembodied spirit looking for a place to rest and to control or influence the place where they're resting. Amen? Does not the Bible say that um, when the unclean spirit was cast out of the house that it went to and fro? looking in the dry places, looking for rest and not finding any. That's kind of funny that a spirit will think it's resting in us when it's causing us turmoil. But it's at rest when it's doing destruction. Amen? Third point, in verse 27, they were speaking of the fact that they knew of the unclean spirits in the man. They, they, they did not say what happened to him. Jesus did not identify the unclean spirit. Tell your neighbor they knew he had a spirit. Read the word of God. They knew he had a spirit. Amen. For they said even the unclean spirits he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. They knew that man had an unclean spirit. Now, I can't tell you if he was doing things, saying things, or, or they knew what he was up to, but they were not shocked that Jesus cast a demon out of him. Amen? They did nothing about spirits in the synagogue. But when Jesus demonstrated the power of God, they acknowledged a change had come into the earth and also a change had come over that brother. They said, what is this, a new doctrine? A doctrine meaning a new principle that forms a belief, a theory, or a policy that is a truth to be received was put into action. The authority of God has come. We need that anointing to set people free. We need to be able to 
help people who want to get free from those things that are tormenting. Amen. There's nothing worse than you want to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and you got a demon that's tormenting you. And you're in guilt and shame, unable to ask for help because of what will people think. People are already thinking because you've been clowning already. The devil's got you fooled. You, they, they already know there's something going on with you. If we look in the paper every day, we see manifestations of demonic activity. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Amen. All of it doesn't lead to death. Some of it is mimicked. People are mimicking demonic activity, calling it entertainment, thinking it's something that we all should be doing. And it's actually a demonic manifestation. Amen. Of lust, demonic mindsets, strongholds. You can look at people and say, there's a demon operating in here. I'm not saying there's a demon under everything, but you can see some of them. They don't have makeup on or a mask, and they are manifesting darkness. And we're seeing that. Amen? Ooh, Lord. There are people that we idolize that our children idolize, that are manifesting demonic characteristics. And nobody is saying it's a demon. They're saying they're showing out. They're just acting out. We are in a very, 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 very dangerous time in a season. Amen. Just as the prophet declared, for Jesus was walking in the word that the prophets had been declaring for hundreds and hundreds of years. In Luke 4 and 18, when Jesus stood up in the synagogue and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind to set them at liberty that are bruised. And that word bruised means oppressed. Preach deliverance. What I'm preaching to you tonight, you will not find in a whole lot of churches. Because people get angry. People get mad. People run. We've had people run. Say, nope, I'm not going back there anymore. They're talking about deliverance. Christian can't have a devil all the while they're manifesting, popping, looking like a sparkler in the spirit. <laughs> all kind of little things are flying off of them. But they're saying, no, that's blasphemous. We're pure. Amen. And then people go to quoting that sweet and bitter water can't flow out of the same orifices. We ain't talking about what's flowing out of you. We're talking about what your hands, your mouth, and your body are doing. Amen. That, that is a defense for an area that cannot be defended. Amen? Because you know as well as I know, you can be speaking sweet, and at the same time, you can turn right around and begin to speak some things you got no business speaking. That isn't what that scripture means. Amen? The same anointing has been given to believers that Jesus carries. As our text declares, we have greater power than demons because we are the legal authority in the earth commissioned by Jesus Christ the Lord. When Jesus Christ said these signs follow those that believe, that was the commissioning. Tell your neighbor, you were commissioned. When they were commissioned. Amen. We were given power and authority. Matter of fact, This morning when I talked about Cain and Abel and sin at the door, and God said, you should rule over it, they had authority then, but didn't know it. 
the manifestation of jealousy, rage, anger, and the spirit of murder was sitting at that door. And he picked it up in his rebellion and slew his brother. Amen. Everything that Jesus gave the disciples, we as present day disciples can walk in. What are you willing to do to walk in the truth of the word of God? What are you willing to let go of? I don't want to be like those in the synagogue that knew the man had an unclean spirit but didn't do nothing about it. Didn't even have compassion enough on him to say, we need to pray for you. There's something wrong with you. You're talking wrong. You're acting wrong. But they just, as in a lot of places, we know that people need deliverance, but we don't want to open up that can of worms. Amen. If you've got issues that need to be addressed and you don't address them, then you're in a situation where you can't possibly get any better because you're not allowing the Spirit of God to convict you to cause you to let go of those things that don't belong to you. Spirits, spirits desire to be in us. Think about it. How many paranormal shows do we have? How many um, people are looking for something that they want to call a poltergeist and it's nothing but a demon? It's not a ghost, it's a demon. But we're fascinated with ghosts. We're fascinated. What did I say on, the pro on TV the other night? Uh, advertising. I was watching something. They said, new series coming out. Ghosts that kill. I said, now that was an oxymoron if I ever heard of one. How did you know? A, did you see a ghost kill? I said, come on. Are we open to everything? I'm like, come on here. It, it must have been the people that made, what, what is the spoof on horror movies? The I, I know what you did last summer stuff or whatever that thing was. They made a joke of it. It must have been the creators of that movie created this, Ghosts That Kill. We are living in a society where we desire to appear normal, but we don't want to believe the supernatural. We need people we need to set free. We need to pray for people to get them out from underneath the power of the enemy. Amen. And I believe if enough of us are praying in here, we're going to set the atmosphere like the prophetic word tonight. The word said, breathe in. You're breathing in heaven. You're bringing it into the earth. We're going to bring that in because we're going to set people free. We're going to break the yokes and the bondages and cause people to be free. Amen. Something happens when people get free. In Matthew 10 and 1, that same anointing that he gave them is on us. And he, when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. And he has also given that same power to us as present-day disciples. You got power, but it's time to walk in it. We have to act on the word that we believe and receive that we are able to set the captives free. Jesus said he came to preach deliverance to the captives. There are some people who are going to get free because they're sitting underneath a good word. They're sitting on a word that will begin to challenge those areas of their life where the enemy got in. Preaching deliverance to the captives. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Ivor Hopkins will be here in March. Amen. 
So he's all ready to come. And by the time he gets here, we should have the ground broke up real good. It should look like peanut butter, bro, peanut brittle. We should have it so broken up and people come in here and they'll just, what's going on? And he just do what he does and we'll be doing what we do. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And it was funny when I called him. He said, I was just putting together a video we recorded at your church for our church program on Sunday. And he was just laughing. He was just tickled, something fierce. I couldn't talk to Sister Evelyn because he was laughing so loud. He said, this must be God. With that accent. I said, yes, this is God. So we're going to begin to set those things in motion. Amen. And we're going to bring deliverance in from another school. Amen. How many know that there's no harm in bringing deliverance from different streams in? Because I want you all to be well-rounded. Amen. I want to be well-rounded. I want to learn something that I don't know. I want to learn some techniques that I'm not doing. Amen. And that's how we're going to operate. We are seeing so many things that need to be corrected. So many things that we need to, to begin to speak as a church because we can change the face of a nation if we begin to do what Jesus did, if we begin to do what the apostles did. Amen. When they begin to holler out that uh, these men have turned the city upside down. How many of them was it? Two. Not 60 or 70, 80 or 90 or 100. It was two that came in and did what? Begin to speak the truth of the word of God. Begin to pull down strongholds. Begin to pull down mindsets. There are mindsets that need to be changed in the church, outside the church, but it must start inside the church first. We've got to decide. We've got some issues that we need to deal with. Amen? Just as judgment begins in the house of the Lord, deliverance does too. Amen? We're going to have one of those sessions. Amen? It could be on a night like this where there's a certain number of people, we just grab people and just begin to pray. And just pray and just pray and just pray and just pray. But that would require you to be honest enough to say, look, I got an issue and this is it. Pray for me. It's like a healing room. When you go into a healing room, you tell them what's wrong with you, they pray. That's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for each other and anybody else. Amen. Because we're declaring that if the church was doing the will of God, we would see people with issues delivered before they end up on TV. Delivered. Amen. Are, are you saying you're going to minister deliverance to, to sinners? No, I'm saying that some of the people that are actually doing things could be saved and set free. Amen. Amen. If we can dig up enough things about their character and where they're wrong, could we not pray that God would bring them into a place where they could get some spiritual help before they become a problem or an issue to somebody else? Come on, that's real church. Isn't that what happened with Jesus? They bought the people. He's walking down Ayersville Avenue going into the city, and they would bring the people out to the curb didn't say that people wanted to come. It said that people who were praying, people knew they had an issue, knew they were at the end of their rope, and brought them out to Jesus. Amen. Or they'd be like the two blind guys, not knowing what's going on, but in the, in the atmosphere, there's something different going on here. Who is it? Jesus. Oh, Jesus, shut up. You're not going to embarrass us. He's not going to minister to you. Your scallywag. And what they do? They hollered and screamed. They hollered and screamed till they made a spectacle and got a miracle. Spirit of blindness was broken off of them. How many people do we pass every day that need some deliverance? Amen. And the sharper you get into discerning 
what that looks like, the easier it will be for you to pray for people. Amen? Because you'll notice, you'll notice that there's something going on here. They're manifesting. They're not just working out an issue. Amen? And then we'll get to the point where you can bind them up by just being in the vicinity. Because that's what we're going to have to learn to do. Because there's some dangerous people out there that are just waiting to be set off. But if you bind them up before they're set off, amen. That's real warfare. Amen. Deliverance is the children's bread. And it needs to be foundly, found as a daily bread for all that believe. Because in his name, we've been empowered to cast out demons. Amen. Give God some glory. We're going to come to that point. All deliverance is, is you having a willingness to be praying for somebody else to go into the trenches. You got to go into the trenches. You got to go in with them. You got to go into the darkness where they're at and not be afraid to go into the darkness. That's how we're going to get people free. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not delivering nobody tonight. <laughs> but I am troubling the waters. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm troubling the waters. You, to your own self, be true. You've got to recognize first. Amen. I remember somebody, I was praying for somebody up here. And they told me, they said, well, I said, what do you need? They said, well, you figure it out. I said, that's not a good thing to tell me. And I'm underneath the anointing of God, and I got people here trying to get help, and you're telling me, you figure it out. I figured it out. I just started calling things and speaking to things and this and that, and tears started going sideways, and it was like, uh, 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 I don't hear it. See, that's the devil. Do you want help, or do you want me to be a Spengali? I, I got to begin to read your mind, what you need. I'm like, uh-uh. Bishop told me that's dangerous. They used to do a thing. Um, where one Friday night, every six or eight weeks, they would have a service and tell people, the gloves are going to be off. That you come up here, we're going to prophesy down to the bone. He said, we quit that after about four or five months. I said, what happened? He said, oh, we were peeling layers off. He said, but that had started that someone said, I just really want all the truth. You know that famous line, don't you? You can't stand the truth. He was right. He said, we don't do that anymore. He said, we only do that with seasoned ministers. We'll call seasoned ministers in and we'll begin to peel some of the layers off to get them to where they need to be. Just the side of deliverance. I'm like, well, you should minister to them deliverance. Amen. Because you can prophesy to people to that level. Amen. But we don't want to prophesy to people to that level. We just want them to give up what they got. Begin to recognize, yes, I got depression. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm jealous. Yes, I got lust. You have to battle one right there because you've already pulled the covers off the enemy. You're shining the light in there. That's what we have to learn to do. If you're going to get free, you're going to have to be honest. I tell people all the time, when, when we do deliverance, and they say, well, um, or, or, are there any areas, any areas of what? I'm praying, and when you get in here, God's going to reveal what you're trying to hide. They're like, what? I said, okay, come on in here. And we keep fooling around, and all of a sudden, Bam! 
God will throw it out on the table, and they're like, oh. I said, all you had to do is be honest in the first place. How are you going to get free, and you got a lying spirit? How are you going to get free, and you got a spirit of deception? So I tell people all the time, I said, I'm praying, I'm asking God, anything hidden will be revealed. Now all my cards are on the table. Now either you reveal it or God will. Amen? Because that's how it has to operate. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone need prayer?